From royal palaces to a thief's hideout, the Mona Lisa has seen it all. But what makes her the queen of the art world? Let's decode the Mona Lisa mystery together. It starts on the busy streets of Paris on a Monday morning, August 21st, 1911. The city was alive with people who were going to work in their offices. Little did they know an amazing event was about to happen at the Louvre Museum. Suddenly, three men came out of the Louvre Museum who had spent the previous night hidden within the museum. Hidden beneath a blanket, they carried a valuable piece of the Louvre, unaware to the world. Went to a nearby railway station, caught the train at 8.45 in the morning and disappeared. The world was unaware and had to discover that these fearless thieves had stolen none other than the Mona Lisa, the most famous painting in existence. Its value today is estimated to be close to $1 billion. But what makes this painting so extraordinary? What secrets lie within the mysterious smile of the Mona Lisa? Let's understand the mystery of the Mona Lisa in today's video. The painting was painted in 1503 by the Italian artist, Leonardo da Vinci. The man behind the Mona Lisa was truly amazing. His talents extended far beyond the realm of painting. He was an engineer, scientist, sculptor, architect, and theorist. Leonardo possessed an endless thirst for knowledge, delving into a variety of subjects such as painting, cartography, astronomy, anatomy, botany, hydrology, geology, optics, and even paleontology. His life alone could fill an entire video. But let us return to the Mona Lisa. Da Vinci's most celebrated and puzzling creation. But who is the mysterious person in this art? Throughout history, people have been interested in the identity of the woman shown in the paint. The first hints about her appeared thanks to the Italian artist Giorgio Vasari, who wrote the autobiography of Leonardo da Vinci in 1550. According to Vasari, the woman was none other than Lisa Gherardini, the wife of the silk merchant Francesco Giocondo, who lived in Florence. He believed that Francesco commissioned this masterpiece for his beloved wife. The name we all know today, Mona Lisa, is derived from the words Madonna Lisa. In Italian, the term Madonna is used to address a woman. Therefore, Madonna Lisa meant Lady Lisa. Over time, Madonna was shortened to Mona, and when translated into English, the N was dropped, resulting in Mona. Mona Lisa signifies Madame Lisa or Lady Lisa. Vasari's theory was accurate. Many theories started to emerge about this woman being someone else. Some claim she was Leonardo da Vinci's mother, while others believed she was a queen from the Italian aristocracy. However, the most intriguing theory suggested that the painting was actually a self-portrait of da Vinci himself, depicting how he would have appeared as a woman. This theory gained traction when artist Lillian Schwartz published an article in 1987, utilizing digital tools to highlight similarities between da Vinci's face and the Mona Lisa's image. Today, we can now confidently assert that the woman portrayed in the painting is indeed Lisa Giocondo, a professor in Florence dedicated 25 years of research to this matter, unearthing archives that provided clear evidence to support this conclusion in 2004. Additionally, he discovered a close relationship between the da Vinci family and the Giocondo family, as well as documentation of Lisa's marriage to Francesco Giocondo at the age of 16 in March 1495. It is possible that Leonardo's father, rather than Lisa's husband, commissioned the painting. According to Palanti, the Mona Lisa was created when Lisa was 24 years old. You might ponder why this famous portrayal is in France when both da Vinci and Mona Lisa were Italian. Well, in 1516, Lord Francis, to begin with, of France, amplified a welcome to Leonardo da Vinci, encouraging him to dwell in France. Da Vinci acknowledged the offer and made the journey from Italy to France, bringing along the Mona Lisa. In spite of the fact that chronicled records are to some degree vague, it is believed that da Vinci had not, however, completed the portrayal. Indeed, after a long time of working on it, he kept making adjustments, endeavoring to culminate his showstop. Appallingly, in 1519, Leonardo da Vinci passed away while still dwelling within the French royal residence. The ruler, recognizing the value of the portrayal, decided to keep it as a portion of his Regal collection. For around 150 years, the Mona Lisa remained within the royal residence until the French transformation in 1797. Amid this violent time, the portrayal was evacuated from the royal residence and depended on the care of the Louvre Historical Center, where it remains to this day, captivating guests from around the world. The fascinating part is that this is the very reason why the Mona Lisa was stolen in 1911. The brain behind the theft was Vincenzo Perugia. He was an Italian nationalist. So leave the painting rightfully belonged in Italy, not in France. After the theft, they transported it to Italy. Stealing such a popular painting was a risky step, especially considering its multi-million dollar value. It's clear that Vincenzo wouldn't have felt secure after pulling off such a heist. But before delving into that, let's explore what makes this painting so unique. For starters, 
The Mona Lisa wasn't painted on paper, canvas, or fabric. It was actually painted on poplar wood, a preferred material among Italian artists of that era. Additionally, the painting isn't large in size. Just take a look at where it's displayed in the museum. You can easily see its dimensions in comparison to the surrounding people. The painting measures only 77 centimeters by 53 centimeters. Despite its moderate size, it holds great significance as it was the first portrait in Italy to focus so intensely on the person. The overall color scheme of the painting may seem dull, with various shades of brown and yellow dominating. It is so yellowish that at one point, a professor declared Lisa a patient with high cholesterol. But there are two reasons behind this. First, a protective varnish layer was applied to shield the painting from moisture, given that it was painted on wood. Therefore, it must be protected from moisture and humidity. And secondly, over time, there has been a bleach. Originally, when this was painted, it used to be more bright and colorful. Some people have tried to recreate this painting to see how it would have looked originally. Da Vinci used a very specific painting style known as sfumato in this painting. Technique of blending. The background you see in this painting is the landscape. This is the Arno Valley in Italy. There are no clear boundaries or outlines between the background and the Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa's hair sometimes blends into the landscape. Blurring the outlines and mixing colors is a sfumato technique. This is the secret behind Mona Lisa's mysterious smile. Look closely at Mona Lisa's smile. The more you look at that smile, the more serious that face looks. But now look into Mona Lisa's eyes. Suddenly you see that Lisa is smiling more. If you look at any part of the painting, be it the background, the forehead, or the eyes of Mona Lisa, you will see Lisa's face starts to smile. Da Vinci spent the most time perfecting this smile. He spent many nights in a hospital in Florence, where he went to remove skin of dead bodies. He wanted to study the muscles and nerves of the face and how they work together to create a smile. He wrote in his book that man has more muscles that move the lips than any other animal. It was very difficult for him to cut the muscles of the lips because the muscles are small and many. During this experiment, da Vinci also studied horses. He compared human expressions with horse expressions. In his notes, he wrote, observe whether the muscle which raises the nostrils of the horse is the same as here in man. Hardly any other artist in history has cut the faces of a horse and a man and made these experiments. His obsession with Mona Lisa's smile didn't stop there. After that, he also studied optics. He discovered that light rays are not concentrated at one point in our eyes, but spread over the entire retina. The central part of the retina, known as the fovea, helps us see the finest details. On the other hand, the rest of the retina takes in more shadows and black and white images. Using this information, he focused on the shadows. So when you see the Mona Lisa in your peripheral vision at her smile, you will see that its central line is a flat line. It looks like she is not smiling at all. But on the other hand, when you look elsewhere, your peripheral vision sees that smile and its shadows are reflected. And then you feel that Lisa is smiling. How would it feel if I told you that the Mona Lisa is not one painting, rather two paintings? This is not a conspiracy theory, this is the truth. The painting of Mona Lisa, as we all know, has a twin painting that was created around the same time. The tale of this second Mona Lisa dates back to 1504, when the renowned artist Raphael sketched a rough draft using pen and ink. This sketch depicted a different scene compared to the Mona Lisa in the Louvre, featuring two columns behind her. Initially dismissed as a mere copy, a German art historian in 1993 debunked this theory. Professor Palanti, who has dedicated 25 years to researching the identity of Mona Lisa, confirmed that Raphael resided in front of the Giocondo family in Florence. Could it be possible that Raphael painted an original piece with the same subject and woman in a similar pose. It sounds almost unbelievable. Another explanation could be that there is another Mona Lisa painting that inspired Raphael's sketch. This mysterious second Mona Lisa was unveiled to the public in 1914 by a novelist named John R. Iyer who lived near London. Raphael used the same painting as the basis for his drawing. The second Mona Lisa is larger than the one in the Louvre. When comparing the two paintings, you'll notice a few differences. Firstly, the woman in the new Mona Lisa looks younger. Secondly, the head in the new painting is tilted slightly forward. And thirdly, the expressions of the new Mona Lisa are very straightforward and clear. There is nothing mysterious about her smile, unlike the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. The two columns in the background are the same as those seen in Raphael's drawing. This has led experts to coin a new theory. They believe that Leonardo da Vinci was actually working on two Mona Lisas. The Isleworth Mona Lisa, which was later discovered, is thought to be the first version of da Vinci's painting. This theory remains a topic of debate to this day. In 2010, the Mona Lisa Foundation began an investigation into the Isleworth Mona Lisa to uncover its secrets. They came up with another theory, suggesting that the face and hands of the new Mona Lisa were indeed painted by da Vinci, but the background was painted by an inferior artist, possibly someone working in Leonardo's workshop. Both of these theories remain unproven due to lack of solid evidence. As for the theft of the Mona Lisa, it was discovered that the mastermind behind the theft, Vincenzo Perugia, 
was an employee at the Louvre Museum. He hid in the museum overnight and walked out with the painting the next morning, believing that it should be in an Italian museum since Leonardo da Vinci was Italian. The theft made headlines worldwide, and numerous detectives were put to work to find the thief. For a couple of years, Perugia kept the painting hidden in his home, pondering what to do with it. The entire world was on the lookout for it. Eventually, growing impatient, he attempted to sell it to an art dealer in Florence named Giovanni Poggi. Giovanni, however, grew suspicious, and upon seeing the stamp on the painting, confirmed that it was indeed the stolen masterpiece and called the police. As a result, Vincenzo was apprehended and sentenced to six months in prison. The painting was returned to the Louvre Museum and reinstated on January 4, 1914. Surprisingly, prior to the theft, the Mona Lisa was not as well known. Only art enthusiasts were familiar with it, 